Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm going to be showing you how to use Adobe After Effects' lens flares. Now, I'm going to be using the lens flares that are built into Adobe After Effects, but if you have something like Andrew Kramer's lens flare pack, then you can use that as well. They probably work pretty much the same. So, we're going to be I'm going to be showing you basically how they work and then showing you how to attach them to two different effects. The first one is this really neat like jet flyby so you see the, the lens flares are basically the thrusters on the back, and they create that really neat, um, basically, lens flare. The three fly by, and you get these like cool effects off the lens. It's really, really neat. Really, really simple to pull off. The next one is going to be this neat tracking one. So what we did was we tracked a soccer ball, and then we had the lens flare kind of go on the soccer ball. This is a video from Dude Perfect. I just needed a soccer ball moving, and they had a pretty neat shot right here. So you can see that the lens flare is creating this really neat effect, like, I don't know, he kicked the sun or a missile or something, but it looks really, really neat with the lens flare. So let's get started on these. We're going to start with the jets because they're simpler, and then we'll move into the, the uh, soccer ball in a little while. So let's go file new composition. Standard 1920 by 1080 and then we're gonna go in here. We're gonna grab our first one our first piece of footage Which is this piece right here, and it was shot using a GoPro So it's actually 4k footage, but we're gonna drop that down So it fits in the 1080p window I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this one right here. Yeah, that's fine So we have this just stationary shot right here, and what we want to do is add a lens flare so we can do two, one of two things. We can just click the lens flare and drag it directly on the composition. Or if we kind of want to, you know, divvy it up a little bit, we can go to layer, oh, click on the composition, layer, new, and then let's go adjustment layer. And we can throw the lens flare on the adjustment layer and then name it something like lens flare so that it can be organized and we actually know where our lens flare is at. What we want to do next is go into the effects lens flare and then the flare center, which you can see up here as well because I've clicked on it right here, is going to be where the flare is currently at. And you'll see it has a stopwatch next to it, which means we can keyframe it. And that's how we're going to get the motion out of it. So if we go, we click on it right here, drag it over a little bit, drag it up some, up some. We can actually click on it right here. That's probably quicker. Um, drag it to where we want. Then we can click flare center. Make sure we're at the very beginning of the comp. Move about, you know, half a second over. Have it go all the way through the comp. So right across the comp like that. And then just like that, we have a moving flare from left to right. Except we kind of want them both to be off the screen. So they start off the screen and they end off the screen. So we're going to do that. We're going to drag this one off as well. And now we have this sort of really fast jet flying by just like so next we want to make it have that cool like starts off at the angle and comes in and gets really bright and then goes away so what we can do is click this button click zero right here and then maybe about in the middle click 100 and then back down to zero at the end and what that's going to do is going to come in get really bright and then fly out really quick and that's kind of typical of how a lens flare would, would look, is the more direct you look at the light, the more bright and lens flare -y it's going to be. And then when you get to the edge, it's going to almost disappear. All right, looking good so far. And then the next thing I did, just to finish off this effect, I'll do it really quick and it's going to be a little sloppy because I'm trying to do lens flares here, not this effect in particular, um, is I just grabbed a jet, like a, one with a transparent background, threw it onto the composition, kind of attached it to where it would be, then went into the position and did the exact same thing that I did with the lens flare. Went from here to here, and then dragged it over to where it would end. Right out there, and then, you know, it's probably going to be a little off alignment. It's not bad for, well, okay, it's actually pretty bad. But <laughs> you know what I'm talking about here is that we're just going to throw a jet on here. We're going to throw in some motion blur onto it, like so. And then now we're just going to have, like, make sure it'll take a little while to get these two lined up. Uh, maybe you want to, like, click on this one and try to, like, find where exactly the flare center is so you can get this one at the exact center. Just some, like, minute details, some moving around of stuff to try to get this to look better. And then make sure that your asset is below the lens flare. You want the lens flare kind of eclipsing the asset. And then, yeah, just align it better. And it'll look really, really neat. And then 
yeah, make sure motion blur is turned on and it'll look even better. And so that's how I basically did the jet effect. I then copy and paste this, move them all up and down, and then you get this end effect where they're all aligned properly and they're all spaced differently so that there's a little bit of randomness because, you know, the world is random. And then they all just fly by really, really quickly like that. So then the next one we're going to do is we are going to go into, uh, is going to be this soccer ball one where it does this cool, like, kick and a soccer ball change. So let's go ahead and create a new composition and let's jump into that one. First, I'm going to grab that little video that I grabbed from Dude Perfect, drop it in here, and we're just going to fast forward to the spot where he does the kick, which is at the very beginning, right here. We're just going to cut it right there I hit control shift D that just slices it in half um, I think it's quicker than dragging stuff out move to where it ends right about there control shift D it again and so now we have this piece of footage right here and the next thing we want to do is we want to just scale it up to the background so you know scale it up right here and now the next thing we want to do is we want to motion track this I'm not gonna go over motion tracking in this because I already have a tutorial on motion tracking if you want to check it out right here. Otherwise, uh, it's really, really simple. I actually had to manually motion track this one just because of the intense motion blur, the tracker right there. The um, tracker couldn't keep track of it for basically up until this point. So I had a bunch of frames that I had to put in there, so I just went ahead and finished it out. I don't want to go through that boring, you know, sort of that tracking for you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually go into here. I'm going to take the tracking data and the piece of footage, control C, and I'm just going to copy it on over here. And you'll see that it's exactly the same, except I actually just tracked it using a null layer. So what I did was I just used a null layer, I went into the position of it, and then for every frame I just moved it where the soccer ball was. Took me about maybe 5-10 minutes. If you use the motion tracker tool and you assign the motion tracker data to the null object, it's the exact same thing. You're doing the exact same thing here. So what's important is that we have our footage and we have our tracking data. So what we want to do next is we want to go into layer, new, adjustment layer, exactly the same what we did before, and drag that lens flare on here again. Now you'll notice that how do we get the lens flare to attach to the position data? That's really, really key here. You know, you might think we would we'd parent it to the null here, but the problem is that parents the adjustment layer and you'll see that the flare isn't moving and this is, which is gonna cut off the edge, it's gonna look really, really weird. So that's not gonna work. So then the next step that we need to do is we need to so somehow figure out how to get the flare center, which is the effect right here, what we're trying to move, attached to the null position. And what we need to do for that is something called an expression, which I have a tutorial for right here. If uh, just five quick expressions, kind of can learn a little bit about expressions there. But this is a really, really simple one. So you don't even need to check out the tutorial unless you want to, you know, know some more about it. What you need to do is you need to go into Flare Center right on this little stopwatch. Hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and click on it. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up the expression tab. And basically what this is is JavaScript that you can write and you can make it basically attached to anything. You can do a lot of really neat stuff from here. But what we're going to use it for is we're going to go ahead and delete this and we're going to click this little pick, pick whip right here and we're going to drag it down to the nulls positioning. Just like so. And now what this does is it's saying that the flare center should be whatever the nulls position is. Which means, now watch, when we drop this, the flare instantly attaches itself to the position marker and you can see now the flare is attached to the soccer ball the entire time. Really, really neat that that just a quick whip from one to the other can, you know, attach something to something else. And, you know, you can do this for a lot of different things. So having that in mind is really, really important is if that parenting doesn't work to get the two attached to each other, look to do expressions and kind of parent them through the expressions. So now that we have this flare going, we got this really neat thing right here. What we want it to actually do is we want it to be sort of like that other one, which is right here, where it goes nothing, gets really bright, and then actually switches colors in there to end it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right into here. We're going to go into the flare brightness again. We're going to start it off at zero. Then kind of choose a, like a peak of its path right about there. Bring it up to 100, maybe a little more than 100. Kind of really get that neat shine on it. Then we want to bring it back down. So we don't want the ball to really be shown. It, gets, it looks a little weird when you do that. So we still want a little bit of brightness here. 
But what we're gonna do is switch it. Actually, let's finish out the brightness. So it's gonna come down, and then when it gets close to the goal, we're gonna have it brighten up again to finish out the effect. So now we got the brightness done, and now we're just gonna use a little bit of a, a little bit of, I guess you could call it a hack here. We're gonna go left click on this. We're gonna click the stopwatch on the lens type, and we're gonna change it from the 50 to 300 to the 105 millimeter. If you're actually trying to create these lens flares according to millimeters and your lens depth and everything like that, then these are actually just different types of it. Um, you'd create, you'd choose the one that most closely fits your lens. So a lot of cameras come with one of these. Um, these are a lot of, you know, these are very popular prime lenses. So you might choose one of these to kind of fit so it looks, you know, according to what your lens might look like. However, I'm going to exploit this and notice that the 105 millimeter is actually a blue lens flare. So I'm going to switch it from, it's going to be at the 50 to 300, that's where it starts. And then once it gets down to its lowest brightness, I'm going to switch it into the 105 millimeter. And then you'll see that it actually changes into this blue. I don't exactly know why. I'm sure that it has to do something with the lenses and colors and angles and stuff like that. But what I'm using it is 50 to 300 is red and then the 105 is blue. So that's how I'm going to use it. So just like that, now you see we have this neat effect where it goes boom, red, goes down, switches into blue and finishes out the power shot right there. And that is how you do it. So that is basically how lens flares work in Adobe After Effects. Um, they can be used to make some really neat things. If you now After Effects is default package is very very basic. So they can be used to like um, in the other tutorial that I had uh, two or three days ago where I created heat waves. I used it to recreate the sun. I just made it a very bright object in the sky like this up there and it makes it look like the sun. So they can be used to really emulate really, really bright objects or they can be used to sort of like accent things, make it shiny and glittery and stuff like that. If you want to get more in depth, like I said, Andrew Kramer and the video, the guys at Video Copilot, they created a plugin. I don't actually have it, but it's like maybe $30 and it adds tons of lens flares to Adobe After Effects. And it's actually almost the industry standard if you want lens flares. I mean, like everyone uses them. It's really, 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 really good pack. Anyway, that's enough on that. Um, so thank you everyone for joining me for this tutorial. That is how you, the basics of how to use lens flares and a couple of really neat sort of effects with it. If you got any questions, comments, or suggestions for future tutorials, because this one actually came from um, a user who was requesting I do something similar to this, uh, an effect he showed me, and so I recreated it. If you got anything like that, throw those in the comments below, and I would love to try to answer them for you. Uh, subscribe for more Adobe-related content. I release a video every other day, so that's a lot of new knowledge that we can all learn together. So yeah, hit that subscribe button, and until next time, guys, see ya.